Okay, to start off this, I think it's just going to be us three. I don't think anyone mm -hmm. else RSVP'd, uh, so I feel like we can start getting into the meat and potatoes of it. But basically, I wanted to start off talking about like my feelings about the spirit of this group. And mm -hmm. because I've started a couple meetups before, and I've always kind of done it with the idea that I'd like it to be a fully like um kind of like organic and non-hierarchical group so every if someone wants to talk about something next week like you can suggest it and we can go into that um and so in the past i've kind of shied away from the leadership role creating agendas and stuff like that but i found that that doesn't tend to work that well so i still want to leave things open for that like if you guys have books or topics or anything that's on your heart or mind to discuss then obviously like bring them up and we'll we'll definitely talk about it and stuff but other than that i'll continue to create like a kind of a curriculum and try to keep things moving forward i have a little agenda with some readings and stuff for today so hopefully you'll find it intriguing and the other thing about the spirit of the group is that I feel like when people are kind of just trying to be sincere and open and truthful uh, with who they are, and even if that means you don't want to be open and you just want to sit there quietly, like if that's who you are, that's fine too. And, but I think that when people come from a place of truth, that like truths are going to be revealed. And like, if you come from a place of authenticity, that whatever, like that more profound uh, lessons and, and uh, understandings and stuff will come through even if it's unrelated to the subject matter and I feel like the underlying purpose of this group is like spiritual growth in the vaguest sense of that and I hope we'll explore what that means or spiritual understanding growth and stuff like that so um so yeah so I just hope that it's comfortable and one thing I learned recently uh did this workshop on the four masculine archetypes the king warrior magician and lover so very interesting they talk about the magician is has access to a place of knowing that's like deep within and it's mm -hmm. instead of like learning and putting information and like you know calculating things it's just like it just comes from a place of truth so i really like that and i feel like they i've definitely experienced where people will say something and it'll hit me in a certain way that i know they didn't intend it but it's just because they kind of like let themselves just let that uh, energy flow through them and let their intuition kind of guide their words and actions and stuff. So, so that's my feelings on like, uh, you know, this, the, the vibe of the group. I think it would be a nice, almost like a playground to test out your intuition or there's other like metaphysical principles or if like, for me, like kind of being comfortable and relaxed in a leadership role is something that I like have some trouble with. So it's almost like this is a playground and a testing ground for those things to, to, to work on those things. And yeah, so I feel like just in general, my feeling is that this group can be whatever it needs to be to accomplish the goals we decide we want them to be. And also it's very casual. So it's like, you don't have to be here every week. I'm not putting any pressure on anyone to do anything, but I'm going to try to make it something that I will personally enjoy and hope that, that you guys also you know, take something good away from it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to like let you guys, if you, I kind of was gonna start with saying like what our names are, which we already did, and what kind of brought us here or what we're looking for from this group or why we decided to show up, even if it's just curiosity. Well, my fair lady, lead you, would, would you like to lead? I'm What's sorry? If you wanna lead, uh, if not, I can share. No, why don't you go first? Okay. Uh, Shannon Lee, um, topic was interested. I, I went surfing because with the, uh, whatever this, we'll call it now, this upheaval that's going on, it's given me an opportunity to uh, take advantage because I know a lot of people are going to do online meetups. So I've been mm -hmm. surfing a lot of different uh, groups. I uh, went mm -hmm. to a couple today and was searching for yours and I found yours, Lee, and I, th and I looked at, uh, Shannon, sorry, and I saw all the particular topics you had and I thought, hmm, would be intriguing to have conversations on those particular topics. You brought more actually, you know, to, to define what even what spirituality is or what's the intuitive and all that. So, yeah, um, that's kind of actually what I'm thinking of hoping to get into next week. But um, yeah. For me, um, overall, whether or not it happens or not, I value the concept. We've probably been here many times before. I just don't want to do it again this time. 
Uh, I'm not a suicidal. I just realized I've done this many ages and uh, seeing the humanity state right now, um, not the directions of the few, whether the elites or whatever, it's the masses that I struggle with. You know, for some reason, when we choose to stay unaware for long periods of time, and then we uh, complain. I find it humorous when we complain about how certain people, uh, you know, what they put in our foods. I'm thinking, but who who told you to stop making your own, growing your own foods? Mm. You know, you know, even you know, I, I get it. You know, the elites, whoever they may be. You know, I can drop all kinds of names, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, when it, also, when convenience is a powerful motivator. I think because yeah. I was like, yeah, why don't we just grow our own food and take it yeah. ourselves? Like, oh, because it's so much more convenient just to buy the cheap junk that. Gets well, the thing is, Shams, I think a lot of times too, you know, language itself is uh, is its own condition. You know, we, we right. use a meaningful language. You know, it's not like back in the day when we use, when people use Sanskrit or even a creative language. So what happens a lot of times? Uh, what, what we do is we all condition each other. This is not named, you know, blaming, you know, our parents, our forefathers, but somewhere okay. along the line, you know, we thought it was a struggle. So we just stopped growing our crops, raising animals, building our own shelters, you know, and which is okay, but to honor or at least respect or, you know, go down on your knees to the elites and say, listen, thank you. <laughs> because if not, they're the ones that are basically saying we don't want to feed four to 7 billion people. It's not, mm. it's not as though if we had hundreds of billions of people living on this plane that we could probably feed ourselves if we we're all doing our part. Mm. It doesn't matter what male, female, masculine, feminine, you know, um, unfortunately, that's where we're at right now, the state we're in. But it's also our rewards. I don't look at it as punishment. That's our rewards. You can learn something from it. You know, that's so. a good way to put it. That's interesting. There's definitely a principle of like thinking what you or what you like isn't always good for you and what you... <laughs> Oh, don't like isn't always bad for you kind of thing. So I like that, <laughs> that even the stuff you don't like could be a reward and mm -hmm. or your uh, betterment in the- Well, we're, we're entertainment champs too. When people usually you know, our likes and dislikes, you can find out in a short period of time, we as a, a species of humans, our attachments and our resistance. That's where usually our likes and dislikes are. You know, oh, that's a, okay. Yeah, our attachments and resistances. Actually, that's really yeah. interesting. It's not about liking your food. Is is your food healthy for you? You know, but unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. most people most people are caught up in their attachments. You know, they say, "Well, I don't want negative things in my life." I said, "Well, hmm, the moon and sun are both positive and negative. Cars, positive and negative. You have to have them coexist yeah. with each other." But when people say negative, "Oh, that's negative," I said, "That's just a perception that we're giving each other." You know, that's very, I, I guess very lang language reveals us quite easily. Hmm. That's really interesting. Before I let um, Alana, I keep wanting to call you Lee. Uh, Is it Lee? I just Does it matter? You prefer? Okay, I'll say Alana if that's what you usually go, or that's your first name. But um, it's a very pretty name, by the way. Um, I just wanted to say I resonate with you on, like, I don't know where my stance is on, um, on uh, multiple lives and stuff like that, but there definitely seems to be evidence for that. So one time I remember I kind of like, sunk into my beliefs like you know when you believe something it changes your perspective or the way you feel mm -hmm. versus if it's just a thought or a concept like I had a moment where it became like I felt that it was true that there were multiple lives and my my initial gut reaction was like oh like I don't want to do this again not again no how many times so I kind of sympathize with you when you said that that's why I was laughing I was like kindergarten we're always in kindergarten Oh, huh, what's that? <laughs> We're always in kindergarten. We're all, yeah, yeah. It's like, it feels like, like, really? How many times am I going to do this? It's mm -hmm. like, same day, different, uh, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, Alana, what are, you, uh, what are your vibes or feelings for being here? Well, uh, <laughs> I want to know where to start. Basically, you know, um, this is only the second time I've done Zoom, and uh, I have looked at different meetups uh, over time, and most of them haven't really interested me. Um, I suppose to kind of do a quick recap, uh, you happen to have mentioned, uh, I guess in our emails, you mentioned uh, a book by Idri Shaw, and mm -hmm. uh, you had read the Sufis, and um, I had looked for many, many years. I had read up on many different metaphysical sort of paths, and it's something that I studied uh, very seriously for a very long time. So I 
encountered Shaw's work way back in 1971 when oh, I was nice. okay. And I knew his brother, and I've met his son, and oh, really? Lessing, okay. who, yeah, and Doris Lessing, who was uh, a student of his. So I actually worked with, uh, you know, some of the organizations, uh, charity work that he was associated with, whether nice. it was for Afghan refugees or, you know, uh, uh, literacy across the world, you know, like in Afghanistan and stuff, you know. So anyway, I have a long, long, long history with all the works. And, um, you know, so when I see that someone online is interested in some of these books, you know, and I mentioned, you said, what are your two books that fascinated me the most? And I mm. said, well, the Sufis and People of the Secret, but People of the Secret now is like $80 or something. Yeah, so, I got, I bought it when it went, when the price dropped, it went to like 40 it but was 36, it was, but by the time I looked at the listing, it was up yeah. to like 44. So I was like, I'm just going to buy it before it goes up yeah. again. I'm so curious and I'm slowly well, working my way through it, but I don't yeah, want to well, get too. It, it, it's now like about, you know, 90s. So, well, know, maybe but, it was an investment. It's a financial yeah. investment for me, so not, anyway, a, not a spiritual investment. Like, okay. So I'm just saying is that's my background. I've okay. done a lot of traveling. I worked, uh, uh, I'm from San Francisco originally. I worked as a professional dancer. And um, I had a lot of years of illness, so um, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I had to deal with that. But uh, and then I, uh, when I was down here in Southern California later on, I worked for uh, the school district, so I did a lot of teaching. Um, so that's my that's my ordinary background. But in terms of uh, you know reading up on metaphysics and and all of this, I'm I'm pretty well read in all of this. I've been at it a long time, and. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like I says, I know, you know, different people in different groups and stuff, but I'm not much of a joiner, so. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I kind of feel the same. lockdown is nothing new to me. I'm used to being a hermit. Just... I was telling my coworker, I was like, if it wasn't for our meetings, like being in-person meetings being canceled, like, I don't know if I would have noticed any difference between the lockdown. Yeah. Cause... I know. It's like if you're an artist or, you know, if you just read a lot or you're an introvert or whatever, I mean, you know, you just, you really don't notice, you know? Yeah. So, so anyway, and that, and that's about it. So I'm just here as kind of like, you know, let's see what this is about. Cause like I said, this is my second time doing Zoom. Oh, know? that's it. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you guys go to work on Zoom or something. But yeah. I'm no, I'm all, I got a lot of Zoom going on in my life. That's true. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. It's pretty basic. What you see is what you get. This is all. No, no big surprises at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions on how to use it or anything, let me know. I should be able to help. But um, but yeah, okay. So one thing you said about like the people who know about Idris Shah, I feel like I kind of like a particular group because the way he writes to me seems like it's almost purposefully a little more confusing or like worded in a certain way I don't know maybe that's like an older writing style but like you really have to focus when you read his works did you get that impression or do you get that feeling I'm curious if you're talking to me yeah because yeah, oh, you're okay. familiar with this um well he's written many many different things and uh first of all you know uh, the Sufi teaching method uh is is one of where they use the scatter technique and okay. they don't they're not going to come out and write, you know, Sufism for dummies, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like that. But he has a number of works. That Wait, so what, what, do you, what do you mean by the uh, scatter technique? Because I kind of they intuitively... Don't, they, don't, they, they come at things from different angles, and they don't necessarily, you know, lay things out like, you know, here's 10 easy steps. Yeah, know? exactly. It's kind of like, and here's one he, idea. In fact, in fact uh, a lot, we see, a lot of his work, uh, it falls into different categories. So he has uh, where he's collected... Uh, like about a thousand years of teaching tales and those tales uh and stories tend to be constructed in a way where they kind of sink into parts of you and they bypass certain things in your mm. your um, your surface mind I you know like we, we all we all listen and we reject things and um tales uh supposedly they're supposed to prepare people on another level so anyway he has a collection of tales so he's got about you know a dozen books on that and then he has other books that you know have 
you know, to do with uh, like travel writing because he has a number. He has a number of uh, uh, pen names that he's used. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Oh, up. wow. He goes deep. Yeah. And but as far as had, the ones that are mm -hmm. under like Idris Shah and have like you know Sufism and metaphysics as the topic, I'm kind no, of curious. He has names entirely. He has one that he used uh, Omar Burke. So oh, among the dervishes, which is a travel log, that's one of his. All and right. uh, another one on secret societies is Akron Darrell. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, but that's mm -hmm. another one. He wrote books on astrology under other names. But for his main work, uh, you've either got the collection of tales, okay. and then you have things like learning how to learn, perfume, mm -hmm. perfume scorpion, um, you know, uh, seeker after truth. Um, and then he has other like anthologies where other people have contributed things. And I know for people of the secret, he he put in a lot of uh, I guess uh, uh, input in that. So, okay. but uh, that was written by a guy. That's um, people of the secret is written by a guy. His real name was Edward Campbell. He was uh, uh, a British journalist, and he was also a lion tamer. So he was a very balanced guy. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Wait, we need to have a whole day on people or a yeah. whole session anyways, on that because I'm now I'm to... like, this goes really deep about Idris Shah contributing, but also the, the subject matter of People of the Secrets very interesting. And I'm not yeah. sure where they're going. I'm only in the third or fourth chapter oh. because it's, it's, well, it's, know, it has a similar writing style to Idris where I feel like I really have to focus. It's like dense and it's like, I don't know, there's something about it. I kind of want to okay. read an excerpt actually for Domenico so he can kind of okay. see here what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, so this is the tale of Hatim. So learning how to learn, like you, you'll, you'll know, but basically it's a prerequisite, a book, and correct me if you feel that it's different or you have a different impression, but the book is a prerequisite or a teaching you the prerequisites to spiritual development. So he doesn't really talk about any metaphysics. He doesn't talk about anything spiritual. He never, even though it's like there's no gnosis or God or anything like that in this book, surprisingly absent. It's all about like the prerequisites to even being able to start on that path without it being a like a sham, basically. Like you're thinking that you're trying to be all spiritually enlightened, but you really just want attention or you want a uh, company or you're looking for a place to fit in and then your motives don't match your aims. So, um, so anyways, the first thing that I, that I took was just this, I like this quote and I feel like it gives an, a, an, a, an idea of what you're saying about how the, just the writing style and some of the thoughts in this book. So this is called The Tale of Hatim. When Hatim el Assem of Balkh, now in, ba in, now in Afghanistan, went to Baghdad, people surrounded him saying, you are a non-Arab of halting speech, yet you silence everyone. He answered, three things enable me to overcome my opponent. I am happy when he is right. I am sad when he is wrong. And I try not to behave foolishly towards him. Ibn Hanbal asked Hatim what things, he would, uh, what things would save humanity from the world. He said, there are four things. Accept the ignorance of others and spare them yours. Or... Uh, Yes, spare for them your substance and do not expect any of theirs. The posture of honesty is not the same as its reality, as everyone knows, but how many people can tell whether they are honest or behaving as if they were honest? A certain tale has been coined to give this important subject expression. In order to illustrate, it has been put into the mouth of two lunatics, which should not really make any of us feel that its equivalence could not occur among us marvel marvelously normal people. The first lunatic religionist, Quote, God spoke to me, second, ditto, second lunatic religionist, he's saying, I did no such thing. <laughs> so that's like, I feel like it jumped from like three different things, or at least two, they were talking about this guy, then it jumps to this weird story about the lunatic religionist, and also I like the way that he uses the word religionist, as if to like, almost to emphasize the fact that it's like religions are becoming, can become like culty or, you know, have that kind of, um, like, in another part of the book, actually, I'll just continue, because this is, I think, a can I interest you for a second? Shams, yeah, please, dude. All dogmas can be religious. All, okay, so how do you define religion? And I, dogma, I uh, think, is pretty straightforward. Dog, dog, a belief system. Okay. There's knowledge and there's belief systems. So uh, any, any, any story that, okay, I'll break it down, because I've been hearing you guys both talk. 
back to talking about um, how we as a humanity actually allow other people to raise our crops. Okay. The, the style of writing, when we read writing, what it teaches the, the mind, both hemispheres, to be very literal. We have many receivers in our body. Be very literal, did you say? L literal. Literal, like linear? Left to right, left to okay. right, right to left. We have different variations of language. People read from left to left sense. to right, up and down, and vice versa. So what mm -hmm. happens is because the mouth is so close to one of the receivers, which is the mouth, we have many receivers in our bodies. Intuition comes from the spleen. You have all the different chakras. So what happens is when people teach, teachings is one thing. How it's taught is another. Oral sensation, oral speaking is different than writing information. So a lot of the old teachers that wrote down information, it's lost its meanings because we use a meaningful language. All languages, like right now we have English that has four different other meaningful languages combined in English. So when you read something, what happens is all your other receivers, if you're an intuitive person, you still have, it still has to address the mind because the mind is closest to the mouth. Okay. Are you following that? Because it's like when you look at, we create things. Not maybe, maybe we don't. Got to keep in mind, language is alchemy. So when we have a technology like the cell phone, it has many receivers to it. You don't actually don't see where the text is coming from. You don't see where the, where the phone's coming from, with the phone numbers and all that kind of stuff. Our bodies are no different. We're receivers. So what happens is when we read constantly with teachings, you lose it. Because what happens is your literal mm. mind doesn't know how to be multi. So when a person says they're open-minded, closed-minded, you have to realize you have a heart, you have the spleen, they all have to align. So you have to have open and closed. Now you have many variations to the mind, open, narrow shell. You can go on and on at all the different variations. We also have liquids in our bodies. It's not the heart, it's the blood that actually goes to the heart or the water that goes there. Back in the days, the Egyptians used to consume gold because that's memory cells. So a lot of these teachers that teach this stuff and all that, they were just leaving a path for us. But when we read it in that style, it loses it. When now, what I, style? Uh, you mean in the style of language, like the linear? No, no. When you read, what? when you read the writing, it yeah. teaches the mind to, to be very literal. It's a conditioning. Our language is conditioned. Mm -hmm. This is why I find it humorous when people say, "Well, we're free." In the spiritual realm, we are, but mm. in the physical lang in the physical, we actually have to learn language and there's okay. vibrations and sound in language are you and saying that, that we're like constrained by how, like we can't think outside no, of can't. the languages we learn so that's how we're constrained is that you can or, you no. can it serves a purpose sorry. literal learning serves a purpose but that's i mean what, what we do have you mean by we're not we're free in the spiritual but then you were saying that we're confined. well we have choices we have choices like i'll give an example i'll give it both of you guys can look at the example when you look at it, everything that you see in the known it's called knowledge when you see something like a wall okay. or you see your hand if you literally go within you realize it's and i'm even using word to describe it you don't see the word wall you don't see the word hand you don't see all the subdirectories so if i said i have a white hand or a green hand, which we don't we have we have different shades of colors the whole black and white human race that's just that's the masons playing a game with us that's the Templars and all that kind of stuff. So what happens is when you look around everywhere, you realize you're just associating to objects. Okay. And anything that you can't see or pick up with your five senses is called spirituality. You can't see time. Mm. The sun and the moon are polarities, but they're gauges. That's all they are. So a person says, let's look up at the, up at the moon. What time of year is it? They turn around and say, well, this is when I plant seeds. It's a gauge. That's all it is. But our mind's been so misled because we don't use all the other aspects of our bodies okay. so say a person's desire you have your lower chakras it goes and before it goes out to your mouth or through your action it you have to address your lower mind point just below the crown well actually it is the crown actually because you have the higher self and your lower self because again when you eat who does all the processing okay wait you're losing me here with the okay. desire the chakra the lower chakra okay, desire sorry. has to meet the it, it has to chakra. it, it has to be it. addressed by your leader which is the mind it's oh, closer okay, to the mouth okay. all right so, and then you have two different it's hemispheres closer to the mouth yeah okay. you have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere one's creative and, and the other one's actually more logical and because the men, the language that we use is a is a is a logical language it's a meaning language you know there's no creation in that language we live in right now in the realm of effects and side effects we don't have a created language. Sanskrit's a healing language. 
Hmm. So the molecules in our bodies can, can, can be revamped again. That's why the immortals and mortals. We're playing a different game now at this point. Is there, is there a place to learn? I like this, what you're saying about languages and their purposes and how there's original languages, because I've definitely thought about that um, before. Is there like a resource or a particular place where I could look more into that that you'd recommend? Um, I, I don't recommend. I, I don't usually go. I don't. I'm not interested in names how, personally. How did you um, learn about it? I guess would be my some question. Some of it, I actually will listen. I will listen to all kinds of other beings talking about things. A lot of it's intuitive. Like okay, we're revealing ourselves. We've done this many times before. But when we're looking for somebody to show us something, which is fine. I think the, in, what people call gurus, they're just guides. That's all they are. Now, a okay. person can get their they can get their egos caught up and say, "Oh, I'm a guru." I said again, you're giving yourself a name. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and that's that's our ego. Again. I was gonna ask then, would you be willing to uh, like lead a session about the languages in particular and your insights not, in it? It's not my forte. Oh, it's not okay. Because I'm, I'm honestly really interested in that. I have a mm -hmm. theory that there's like in the metaphysical world that words um, are the true substance of the physical things. So if you knew like the original word for something in its like spiritual form then somehow you would have more knowledge or dominion over the thing itself or something like that. I don't know. It's a very vague idea. That's why I'm curious to learn more. But okay. so just keep that in mind. If you come across a book or if something speaks to you that you can forward me some info on this or website, whatever video, YouTube video, just keep me in mind. Well, are you really talking about, okay. This. If you're talking about language, which some people yeah. would call black and white magic, because you speak it out loud, there's vibration and frequency in there. But mm. if you're not aware of the fact that you have liquids in your bodies, that's where it's stored the memory. Because we wonder, okay, where, where's the recorder in our bodies? You know, and like I said, I, and I've, yeah, I've, I've seen this research about water can hold uh, information and memories and different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really Positive and negative. And it makes yeah. sense. It's in your body. So. Mm. And it's around you and it's around you and you have auras. Yeah. I ha have you uh, read this book or talked to or this guy, um, Proof of Heaven, Eben Alexander? You guys heard was, of that? What was his teaching about? He had basically, he was a neurosurgeon and he got this E. coli in his brain mm -hmm. that completely shut down all of his like brain function. And he was, all the doctors said that he was going to be, he was in a coma for like months or several weeks. Mm -hmm. Everyone said that he wouldn't come back or if he came back, he'd be completely brain dead. He'd be a vegetable. And basically in this time when his mind was supposed to be completely offline, he had the most vivid, like incredible experiences, which didn't like him as a neurosurgeon understood that this couldn't happen as a hallucinations of the brain because his brain wasn't functioning. It wasn't that the part of the brain that could have created those kind of hallucinations. And also it didn't feel like hallucinations to him. There's all these interesting things about people he saw there. Also, when he went into the, it's like a near-death experience, but he didn't go with his own personality because his brain was shut down and all his memories lost and stuff. So he's kind of like went into this metaphysical world without an understanding of who he was or a history or like a connection to the real world. So it's just a very interesting, and one of the main things that happened when I brought it up because you said about memory is that he said when he first came out of the coma, he had no memory of every, anything. But as he uh, began to recover, his memories returned. And what was stranger is that they returned more, like he would remember things that he hadn't remembered before the coma, confirmed by his family and friends being like, oh, you didn't, you said you didn't remember, you know, like he would talk to them and say he remembers these things that he didn't remember before. So as a can neurosurgeon- sure, Jim, Can, can uh, I share with you what actually he, he's unaware of? What's that? We have many receivers in the body, many. So what happens is the brain is this one receiver. This is why we have the word meant, government, entertainment. Government, if you know Latin, it basically means to rule the mind because they know that's the head piece. But your intuition, like that's when people go under the knife or whatever. I was there still. They're aware of it. Why? Because you have an intuitive receiver. You have an emotional receiver. It's all in the midsection. That's why women, females, I'm going to say, because there's the feminine and masculine as aspect. The female part, actually, is closer to there. Most men actually are the groin area, but they usually use a logic. So your brain's always up here. So when nurse, neurologists, whatever these guys are, they, they all think everything comes here. Yeah, It resides up here, but you're still fully functioning with the rest of your body. We have so many receivers in our body, but the brain is only the last part before it comes out of our mouth. And so when well, a person... I mean, the one yes. thing I wanted, I'm sorry, I just want to say this about memory because I think it's really interesting, is that he was saying that 
no like neurosurgeons all know but they don't talk about it no one has ever lost memory by a piece of the brain getting cut off there's nowhere in the brain where memory is stored even though that's a conventional understanding if you like the neurosurgeons know that there's no memory storage of the brain so what you were saying is like and he was like i don't know the memories couldn't have been in my brain because my brain was damaged and then rebuilt mm -hmm. the memories had to have been stored somewhere outside the brain and i kind of assumed that was like some metaphysical place but what you said about the water molecules of the body mm -hmm. his water mm -hmm. molecules were just chilling there while he was in a coma that's so right. if what well, if memories can be stored in that that would be a very interesting you know uh explanation for how and then it just kind of reabsorbed into the brain slowly mm -hmm. as it but anyway so yeah go on i just wanted to get that thought out no no no, no. I, like um, i said we're so, at such an infant stage still you know if me and you came back another hundred years we're probably will come back another hundred years no don't, and, don't put that on me bro you can no, do whatever no, you want no, no it could be good or bad it depends on your learning lesson right sorry can I, can go ahead in here Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Lee. Yeah. The book that you chose is called Learning How to Learn. Mm. And the whole aim of the Sufi or fourth way or whatever you want to call it. Um, fourth way. Science. And they consider higher consciousness and that development an actual science. So mm -hmm. this is not Shaw's teaching. This is teaching that goes back to the beginning of almost like mankind. Makes but sense. the whole yeah. thing is that we have parts of ourselves which do not exist and are not confined within this time-space continuum. You see this every night in dreams. You might see it in this doctor's exper experience, okay, where you cannot explain any of this uh, by these finite things like the body and the brain. So in terms of just doing a really quick recap of uh, Sufi metaphysics and the whole thing, they believe that mankind, many, many, many eons ago, something went wrong on the planet, okay? And you have people who parts of themselves are not quite awakened. And you have kind of like a potential, which is that within every person, which is not well-formed, and is in a sense cut off from higher things, which could really help. And after death, uh, their higher bodies don't do that well, okay? But anyway, just to kind of get back to things, what they're trying to do is to try to awaken certain things, um, you know, within a, a person, you have uh, higher connections that can be made. So the whole thing is to try to use this life in order to develop these higher perceptions. And once that higher body is sort of awakened, then uh, you have uh, what they call the complete man. And this is a uh, actual science that they you know, uh, specialize in and that they feel has been handed down. They do not accept that there is any division between life and death, okay? For a Sufi mm -hmm. master, there is no division, depends how advanced they are, okay? But what they're trying to do, and of course they don't proselytize, and, and most Sufi teachers are very uh, well known for rejecting people, but mm. you know, what, what you have is, uh, when, it when it comes to higher perception, it has really not that much to do with the brain, as Domenico was saying, okay? Um, the higher perceptive faculty has something to do with the heart. And in uh, other languages, English is a really lousy language to get across True. certain concepts. So I get that it, feeling. I've, I speak a yeah, little bit like, of Arabic. I started studying Chinese. Right. And I feel like those, Arab, Arab, those languages yeah, are so Arabic, much richer and deeper. Right. Uh, Arabic and Persian have uh, better terms. So they have different terms that they use. But the main... Uh, seat of perception and higher perception is through the heart, you mm. see. And they also lay out certain centers um, that are kind of dormant and they're not really associated with particular areas of the body, but then they sort of are. So they're not really chakras, they're kind of something else. Anyway, these centers all have to do with uh, the higher organs of the higher body and they try to get them awakened one by one. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have different centers. In fact, the Christian sign of the cross 
kind of commemorate some of these centers, you see. So anyway, you'll find that in, in, uh, in all the other books. But, you know, it, this whole thing of mankind's next step, which has to do with evolution, and it has to do with higher consciousness, they consider this something that has already been around and which is a higher science. They call it dervish science. So it kind of elongates, if you ever heard of the teacher George Gurdjieff, he was one of the first people who came to the West and tried to get across these ideas in kind of an intellectual way. And when that? he Sorry? died, uh, George Gurdjieff. George Gurdjieff, okay. Is that yeah. someone I should look up? Should I make a note? Yeah, what do you think? yeah absolutely. George because, uh, Gurdjieff Gurd came... Gurdjieff came from uh, kind of like Eastern Turkey area, and he was convinced that, you know, man was sort of just, you know, going around in circles and had no <laughs> idea what he was doing on this planet. And he was convinced that, you know, there was hidden knowledge and that there were people who still him had it. Idea. <laughs> so Gurdjieff, in fact, Peter Brook did a movie on Gurdjieff. It's called Meetings with Remarkable Men. Oh, so, that sounds promising. Yeah, so Gurdjieff had come, he had, he had studied in Central Asia, he was a double agent, he was with the, you know, the lamas and the monasteries. Anyway, Intriguing. he came to the West. He, first he was in Russia, and mm -hmm. then he came to the West. And so he parked himself eventually in Paris because, you know, there was the Russian Revolution. This was around the turn of the, of the 20th century. But Gurdjieff brought a lot of these sort of uh, dervish science ideas. And people who were the intellectuals uh, in Paris at the time, you know, really became enamored of him. And so you have many people who have written books on him, and they call his system the fourth way. It's not really Wait his Wait a minute. System. I feel like I might have just read about, is he in the book of uh, the people of the secret? Yeah, they could mention him at one point, yeah. I wonder if but, I just but, read that. Gurdjieff, okay, I'll have to look after we yeah, talk. Yeah, Gurdjieff, Gurdjieff died 1949. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, all his, you know, people who were studying with him kind of said, well, what do we do now kind of thing. So then at one point, uh, I guess about 10 years later, you know, you have different people who had studied with him. A, a well-known one was a guy named uh, 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 Bennett. Uh, it was uh, John Bennett. And John Bennett was the one who was responsible for bringing Sabud, if you've heard of Sabud, um, oh. uh, to the West. Anyway, so at one point, uh, Shaw and his brother and father, who are from Central Asia, you know, they were here in the West and they took on some of uh, Gurdjieff's old students. So anyway, I'm just saying is these ideas have been brought to the West. So Gurdjieff kind of did an introductory thing, uh, interjecting these ideas into Western culture. And he had a lot of famous students. Um, so Aldous Huxley was influenced by Gurdjieff and okay. Bennett and Uspensky. Many, many people, um, you know, uh, you can find a whole bunch of books on it. But I'm just saying is he studied in Central Asia you know, and he brought a lot of these things back. So if you were to read through some of, Gurdjieff actually didn't write anything. Um, mainly people wrote about what he said in certain conversations. So I'm just trying to link that that tradition uh, is sort of linked to, uh, you know, what Shaw was also mm -hmm. trying to update. Because if you go back and you read old classics, if you read Rumi, if you read Al Ghazali, if you read any of this, it's really hard to read because it was written thousands of years ago, and it's written for that particular culture. You know, yeah, you have to have a pretty have to, deep knowledge you know, you don't of like Islam. To read this stuff. I mean, it doesn't say anything to you, so you have to constantly have a refreshing of these materials. You see. So, but I'm just saying, as you know, the the science is there. It's the same. Uh, thing when they're talking about the way. So they're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, it is possible for every person to uh, reach uh, a higher consciousness, a, a higher development in a sense. And uh, it's, it's a pretty well laid out path, but there's no one set way to get to yeah. it. In a sense. 
you that know was, I mean? yeah that was kind of like the main one of i feel like that's probably the underlying uh theme of learning how to learn or one of the core themes is that he he mentions about like people used to have a methodology with an aim and they knew what their aim was so they used the methodology to get to their goal but then at some point they forgot what the aim was and became obsessed with like making the methodology into into the aim the methodology becomes the point and then you lose the real reason and his kind of thing was like yeah it can be any path as long as you're getting to where you need to go any path that gets there is the right path and it's but like um, well but the thing the is, is like where are you trying to go but, like what's the point but, but they're very they're very specific though up to a certain point you know you have everybody's like regular human beings and when he's talking about learning how to learn it is a particular break in perception so he talks about when you learn the difference between the container and the content you will have knowledge this is an mm. old old saying and Gurdjieff talked about how you have to in a sense make a leap into what he would call like the second river or something and at that point when the higher centers get uh, activated then your perception changes and the regular world in a sense helps you um, on this path to higher evolution you see but all of this learning how to learn and all of that and the way to the way um, there's preliminary stuff that people have to do okay um, and then at some point there's a leap that has to be made and he and they term that you know not just learning how to learn but knowing the difference between the container and the content and it's a perceptual thing so I'm not sure if I'm making much sense here. I make I know, more I sense. I love that, that right. <laughs> what you're saying about uh, learning to distinguish the difference between the container and the content. I feel like there's a lot of depth there. I'm going to be reflecting on that later. Yeah. Um, but no, that does make sense because there's the outer forms and then there's like inner truths. I feel like, it, is that like kind of like a recurring well, theme? Yeah, because the mystic, uh, if, if there is a higher current that intersects this life but at very in irregular intervals and at irregular intervals is what you said in irregular yeah and okay. people, some people pick up on it either accidentally or they were already born kind of very intuitive or they're psychic or whatever but this current comes through and 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 so the problem is that most people are totally unaware of it you see mm -hmm. but if you can make uh, enough progress and you can kind of make this leap, then that current that kind of comes through in a sense can teach you through anything. So someone who is say a mystic and they've had these experiences and they have seen God or, you know, God knows that the doorknob was talking to them. I mean, who knows? Okay. Um, they're picking up on something very different, you see, and that's a container and the content kind of thing. So if you ever go back through a book, it's a classic called Mysticism. You can the read book up. Just called Mysticism. Yeah, there's a book. Oh. It was it would, came out in 1907 actually. Okay. And uh, this woman, she put together all of the people who were these, you know, known mystics, uh, different cultures, and they all had either diaries or you know, there's writing about them, and you know, they all went through absolute hell. <laughs> <laughs> with these experiences that they couldn't control. So mm. you talk about a doctor who, you know, had this, you know, thing with his brain mm -hmm. and you know, he he ha he's trying oh, to Oh, it's stuff like that. Like Well, but you know, well, there are people who run into psychic experiences and they can't handle them and some people yeah. end up in mental asylums. You don't mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. You know, um and, uh, you know, it's interesting. So this book, Mysticism, is like a bunch of little biographies of people who have had these? Yeah, yeah, it that is. That sounds it, Okay, cool. Yeah, but, you know, and I also want to point out that one of Shaw's better-known students is Doris Lessing. She was okay. a novelist, and she put out all mm -hmm. kinds of novels. She did win the Nobel eventually. But What's her, she, like, uh, what are one of her most famous ones? Do you, do, I feel like well, I probably a uh, golden notebook. Um, she also uh, has written just a lot, Four Gated City, Children of Violence okay. series. But the ones that are the visionary, visionary ones are um, like Shikasta. 
So okay. she has a bunch of visionary novels. So if you look up Shikasta and there's two sequels, she was a student of Shaw's and she was a student of mysticism and she was extremely well read. So she has very interesting, uh, Shikasta is about the history of, of earth and mankind. And uh, it has, oh. it's a very interesting setup because it's basically talking about two different sort of like empires that have created earth. And one, which is the Syrians, they maybe come down in spaceships and put down different animals and get species going and all that kind of thing. But the other, which is from the cannabis system, they don't just come down here and visit. They die and reincarnate. Mm -hmm. And they come through, you know, this psyche and everything like this. So she, ha she has a heck of a setup. But I'm just saying is she has an awful lot of ideas in there. Um, about and that actually you would might tie into people of the secret because of how she sets up so she sets up the entire history of mankind and religions and you know it's a complicated novel but what she did was pretty stunning so I'm just saying as I'm mentioning mm -hmm. that she was a longtime student of Shaw's right. and just Sufism because they don't believe in trying to number one uh, have people get stuck on teachers or or join something mm. they're very very careful about cults very very careful about uh, teachings that deteriorate and then you've just got the form of it mm. and you That's can a meet a lot of people out That's there true. who are supposedly <laughs> sufis and they all have uh, religious trappings and they all wear special outfits and yeah, that's like entertainment rituals. Right? all the yeah. rituals can't leave all the rituals. yeah so anyway right. that makes sense so okay i'm gonna i have to wrap up when it's uh, 7 30 i'm fasting for ramadan and so it'll be time for me to start getting ready to eat but um i wanted to one i would like was just kind of curious about um like how this I, this was very kind of loose and I enjoy talking to you guys and learning about this. I feel like I have a bunch of uh, leads for interesting things to look into and, and paths to follow and walk down. But um, I kind of want to hear what you guys feel about this, this first like session. And uh, if you, if you like the like kind of relaxed structure, or if you prefer more structure or what parts like you liked or didn't like, just so I can figure out, you know, what to focus on next time or if I should be more or less organized or how to proceed. Well, the only thing that I would recommend is that um, ahead of time, if you're going to uh, say focus on something, whether it's magic or Buddhism or, you know, the Rosicrucians or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, I, I try to orient my mind and my, uh, I guess my thoughts and what I'm going to say toward that. So when you chose learning how to learn and that's some of Shaw's stuff, <laughs> that's where I'm coming from, you know. Yeah. But if someone wants to talk about Alistair Crowley or, you know, whoever, then yeah. grant it's, my mind for that, you know. It's difficult to know where the tangents because tangents can be very helpful to getting back to like to making illustrating the main point or just maybe they're just interesting. But that's sure. where I have trouble. Like how far should we go down ta tangents and where should we how much do we like kind of purposefully focus on the topic at hand? So I appreciate that feedback because it, uh, okay. you know, it's giving me an idea. And what about you, Dom? Whatever direction you guys want to go. The fact that there's only three of us and it sounds like we actually complement each other in certain ways. Yeah, I agree with you. So you're exactly. chill? I could talk about anything. I could even talk about when most people are stuck in their emotional planes. That's what karma really resides in all that. That's where you were talking earlier, Lee, about the heart. It's the blood. That's what actually goes through the emotions. So... Um, and of course, well, I mean, one of the yeah. things I've, I'm definitely yeah. eager to pick your brain, um, uh, I'll be both of you for sure. But Domenico, I feel like you've got like ideas where I'm just, I'm just, hit, I'm just scratch, like I'm seeing the surface of these ideas. And like, mm -hmm. I would be interested, like, I know you said that um, the language thing isn't your forte. But if you have like a certain something that you feel it would be valuable to, to, to talk about, and you feel like you're, you know, uh, uh, an expert enough or you know like you feel comfortable talking about it definitely oh, i feel comfortable talking about anything about it all it. Depends. but is there anything that you feel would be particularly 
like um, useful for people and maybe we like is not as common knowledge kind of thing. That's, well, what, I, that's, that's what I like to dig into, you know? I give humanity the benefit of the doubt for themselves that they have the ability to respond, hence responsibility. You know, wisdom, knowledge will get you so far. And that's the child of both wisdom and understanding. So when people are philosophers, they usually are ch chasing their feminine aspect. Understanding is the, the father aspect. So for most people, they have to realize understand means for themselves. It's their own journey. All right, you know, I can appreciate that. Lee actually mentioned it, you know, wherever these books are and wherever these characters are talking about it, there is ships, but there's also different planes. We just think because if you saw, you've never seen a plane before, you would think it's coming from the skies. Yeah, but it's coming from somewhere else. So mm -hmm. we got to be very wary. You know, we, we do have a big body of water for a reason. You know, our, our, our reason mind can comprehend it if it's presented to us. Like I said, in 100 years we come back, I would ask anybody, even in this room here, you know, anybody that created the internet, you know, anybody that did the alchemy of steel or plastic. No, this is all given to us. That's why it's called debt. We're not debt, debt with fiat currency. We're actually debt to whoever creates all this stuff. Hmm. Like a karmic debt. No, no, I'm, um, no, no that, that's something else. Uh, oh. we, we're, we're, we stay here because of, of our emotions. You know, people fight wars because of their emotions. Now, they'll use their intellects to actually create a tank but it's their emotion that keeps them here. Fight for my country, even when we name drop. That's actually karma. That's why some, some of the older teachers never wrote nothing, because they realize that's karma. Because they realize, I'll, I'll, I'll get my ego to be attached. You know, the whole teacher-student mm -hmm. within, they also have custodians, you also have principals. You have all these other different levels within, within us, around us. You know, so when I say I don't want to come back here again, I don't want to have to practice kindergarten again. I want to do other things. You know, when I hear about people talking about ascended masters, ascended master needs descended slaves. So those characters, they're just tricksters in disguise. Yeah. They don't find out until they actually have to be rebooted. You know, it's like masonry, 33 degrees, but it's actually 360 degrees. And they're all in the unknown. So there's so much stuff that we can learn, but unfortunately we're dumbed down with our language. All right, that's interesting. All right, there's way too. So what I'm going to do, okay. so here's my plan between this week and next week, is I'm going to type out the things that I wrote down, and maybe I'll do a little research. I have like an agenda thing, which Sweet. we didn't really go through, but it has like some screenshots from the book and stuff. So I'll share that somewhere where you guys can see it in the meetup group or whatever, mm -hmm. if you want to check it out. And then I'll add the notes from today there. And then what I was thinking for next week is I thought like learning how to learn is kind of like a prerequisite for being like, all right, are we in the right mindset or uh, spirit for undertaking this journey? And then the next thing I thought would make sense would be to discuss what is like uh, you said, uh, like spirituality, but I was going to say metaphysics. But I feel like, like you said, you can't see, hear, touch it kind of thing that never belongs in the spiritual realm. So like what is metaphysics and what are the virtues of studying it? You know, that kind of thing was going to be my thought for the topic of next week, which I feel like both of you could definitely contribute deeply to if you, um, you know, want to hang out again next week. I think uh, um, I would, yeah, I would appreciate you guys bringing whatever knowledge and wisdom you have on that topic. And I think what I'll end up doing is maybe being a little less structured, but just like, so like just bring a couple notes or things I find interesting to to share and then we can kind of let the discussion evolve as it will. And if you guys do the same, that's great. If not, I'll, we'll have enough, you know, I'll, I'm sure we'll have enough to talk about. It sounds like we all have a lot of, uh, you know, a similar interests and different, like you said, complementary backgrounds or so I like that. Sounds like well, if you want to like lead, did they have a valid point actually? If you want to lead, uh, I'm, I'll follow your your lead, Shams. I guess when you were talking, I already I don't did a want lot of to lead, but okay. I'll lead if it's if it if it benefits the group. That's where I've kind of like fallen into. I always try to start groups because I find interest in like I like this is something that interests me, but I don't necessarily mm -hmm. want to be the leader, but I don't see it out there, so I have to create it. But yeah, I'm talking about structure. I'm talking about structure because structure, I could easily yeah. have talked about it. You know, all the words you have: attention, attachment, sincerity, you yeah. know, practicality. Those are all definitions, and we can all probably bring our own personal experience and how we perceive it. You know, for me, like I said, I could talk about anything. You know, I, I I'm, I'm more interested in the essence of things, but anything in the known realm, I'll gladly talk about. 
That's really, so you're saying things like that where I feel like I'm going to slowly start to, to understand you more deeply, but. You're, under, you're understanding yourself, not me. You're only going <laughs> to reveal your own understanding. For me, I'm my own character. You can't pick up anything from my five senses. And actually we have many senses. What we can share with each other, you know, the whole idea of debating with each other's opinions, it's kind of humorous because really what we're trying to do is we're trying to, that's where belief systems come from opinions, one's own opinion. You know, people that debate about the concept of free will, I'm thinking, okay, we're conditioned with the language, F-R-E-E, -E, both for sound and frequencies. There's vibration in it. So how can you have free will with the conditioned language? It's humorous. You're getting, oh, like, okay. I think I kind of get what you're saying. Like, but they debate, they debate their concept like they do, they, they, they debate about the theory of gravity. It's a theory, you know. Are you saying that you can't be free within constraints because the very... Uh, like uh, um, definition of constraint is like opposite you, freedom. You're using a language. Every yeah, word that comes out of your mouth, it's or no. Every every word that comes out of your mouth was conditioned from birth. Doesn't matter oh, what part of the I world see. you're in. Okay. So for you okay. to talk about free when it comes to language. Now, if we're talking about your 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 you know your aura, who you truly are, you know, because you're not your body, you're not your thoughts, you're not your uh, you're not your emotions. You do the journey of figuring out things you're not. That doesn't mean just because whatever you don't know, it doesn't mean you know what you are. It's a reduction pro process. You're not the contents. As uh, I think Lee mentioned the words, somebody shared or whatever. Teachings are great to have. Don't, don't get me wrong, guys. Teachings are great to have. And, but as long as we don't get caught up in, oh, the name of Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and all this kind of stuff. It's like, but people, you just talk about Ramadan. Makkah wasn't the place they used to bow down to. Yeah, before. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what, what you're saying about, um, uh, anyways, no, you're not. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. We can go no, on. We can I, go I feel on. you, dude. I feel you. <laughs> I lost my thought, but when something no you said there really resonated with me and then I lost mm -hmm. it. No um, Lee, thank you very much for sharing your, your world of information. Thank you, Han. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Both of you guys. I, was, I uh, have a question. Okay. Uh, Shem, where, where did you get your name from? Um, it's Shamsuddin. It's an Arabic yeah. name. It means uh, Shams is the sun, and then Dean is. Have you come across the word Dean from like Al Ghazali and stuff? Like, I only know um, that uh, Rumi, uh, of course, was uh, his his great spiritual. Ah, uh, yes, companion, of course. Shams breeze, you see. Shams and the so I was kind of interested in your name because I've done a lot of traveling in the Middle East, so I was just kind of curious. It's not a very common name. You find a lot of Adeens, but not too many Shams uh, mm. That's been my uh, experience. It's more is of like an archaic family name. family from any particular region in the Middle East? Uh, my mom's Nubian Egyptian from Southern okay. Egypt. Yeah, so, but... Um, yeah, I've, I've been down there. I, I saw a lot of Nubian dances. Oh, I've done nice. That's yeah, I've, I've been all over the place, but I don't want to keep you, so I know you want to wrap up your meeting, <laughs> but I was just curious because of the name Shims. No, of course, of course. And we can always chat also in the okay. meetup group, um, discussion, whatever stuff. And, and also like just whatever we could, we've been emailing and things, obviously, Domenico, if you want to email or call mm -hmm. me about anything, you're welcome cool. to like, I don't know. It's cool. Don't I'm put that out there. I will. I will. I'm the kind oh, of oh, What have I done? I take it back. I take it back. No, I'm just You'll get a whole I, bunch have, of I have one more, one more online resource, which you might, uh, like, okay. Uh, and uh, that is online. Um, the the man, he's like 95 years old, and um, he used to be over at the Philosophical Research Society. His name is Stefan Heller. He's originally from Hungary, but uh, he has online lectures on every subject out there. And he's a wonderful guy, and okay. he also has his uh, his center right now. They can't meet. They're over in Hollywood at oh. the old. At the old uh, Annie Besant uh, Theosophical Center, but anyway, he used to always lecture at least once or twice a week, even though he's like ninety-five. But uh, online at gnosis.org, you can okay. find a lot of his lectures and things. Uh, so I just thought I'd mention it because uh, he lectures on absolutely anything, and okay. you can always find something. So I just thought I'd mention it. It's like you know, general metaphysics and spiritual and mm -hmm. whatever. You know? Yeah, I love that gnosis.org. I'm gonna check. Yeah, and out. he has he has a lot of books too. But he's a he's a wonderful guy, wonderful wonderful man. Does he do do a lot of YouTube's too, Lee? That's what I was. Uh, yeah, too. he does have some YouTube's. Yeah, he does. Well, people make them for him because okay. he doesn't deal with it. 
I can already tell Lee's but, pretty informative. You probably do, read a lot on HB and Alice Bailey and all those characters. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. anything. He can. He's he's probably the most well-read person I've ever mm -hmm. run across, and just a really genuine, you know, man. Uh, he's also a bishop, so mm. <laughs> you know, you can always go to church too. I mean, I don't know, <laughs> but you can always go to church and get a blessing, you know. Mm -hmm. But he's an interesting fellow. Yeah. He's on YouTube too. Okay, sorry, I just had to. No, interject. that's great. Honestly, you guys, I feel like I have like, I like to go really deep into things, and I feel like we covered so many like mm -hmm. things that I want to dig so much more deeply into. I guess that's what I'll leave with the the feeling that like I'm hoping that as we get our 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 flow into things, we'll be able to like focus uh, deeply on one topic. I feel like I would like that, but. Yeah. Whatever this ends up being, I'm happy with it. I'm just glad to okay. have connected with you guys. And I definitely enjoyed our our time together today. All right. So okay. Thank you very much. Enjoy yeah, Ramadan. Thanks. Enjoy Ramadan. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Appreciate it. God willing to see you next week or whenever our paths cross next. Yeah. Right. Take care, you guys. Salam. 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 Salam.